Next. Well, we've just started recording, so let me start by saying this is SVP session and it's called how to engage and we're going to get into it in a moment in the meantime welcome everybody thank you for coming open up your chat if you haven't done that yet and let us know if you know what legislative district you're in and if you've met with your electeds and it looks like people here are, are pretty in the know which is lovely it means i might be able to go a little bit faster in some sections and let's see, how many people do we have on? Uh, do you have the, uh, Tali, who is my partner in crime on this session? Do you, can you see? Yeah, there's 13 of us. There's 13 of us, Terry, so far. So it's okay. about half, a little under half. Okay. Or that's a little over half, sorry. Ah, Tally, you were one of the redistricted ones. Okay. Um, so it's 505. Tally, if you will continue to let people in, I think I will go ahead and get started. I'm going to close my chat window. Oops. There we go. So uh, welcome, everybody. I'm going to start sharing. And thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Terry Cole, and I've been part of the um, Social Venture Partner um, Advocacy Task Force, along with Tali, who's my partner in crime this evening, and Ruby, who's also on the call. Emiko was not able to make it because she's en route for to somewhere, I can't remember, for a conference for SVP. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, when Ruby Tully and I, as well as Emiko, uh, Renee, and Sherry Richardson, uh, when we were thinking about programming and Melissa. for- And Melissa, and Melissa. And Melissa's on the call. I can't see everybody. You're right. You guys have to keep me um, honest here. And of course, Melissa- um, all Thank those wonderful things. <laughs> Absolutely. My apologies. I can't see everybody because I'm sharing. So we, we were really thinking long and hard about this advocacy and we're like, you know, we really want to affect change in a new way, uh, in an expanded mission. And we decided that, um, looking at economic justice is something that SVP is uniquely, um, uniquely positioned to do. Um, and so this is the fourth. We started with what is the foundations of wealth and equality? And then, and all of these are recorded, by the way, if you weren't able to attend them. And then we heard from a fellow philanthropist, um, and we have um, um, two of them on the call this evening, Kathy and David Habib. And um, really candid, wonderful conversation about why they're engaged in revenue reform. And then we had our last session where we had advocacy organizations talking about the need and what they do, as well as uh, State Senator Frame from the 36th, talk about the need and some of the bills. And in this session, we're hoping that you're going to be ready to join us as a um, our Washington State Legislature goes into session, and we're going to raise our voices at very specific moments in time around very specific bills. But what you're going to learn tonight can be uh, leveraged for any cause that you might feel very passionate about, because it's just a framework of how to engage uh, when bills are being considered. I see people are still entering. Thank you. So I'm not an expert. I'm just going to start and say grassroots activism. That's what it's all about. I am not an expert. I'm not a paid lobbyist. I don't know any of that stuff. But I have engaged with my electeds and I have tracked bills and I have gotten very deep on what does it take to get a bill enacted. And then once it's enacted, to get it actually implemented and implemented in the right way. 
And so I'm just going to share and Tali's going to chime in when I go off the deep end or forget something. Um, I'm just going to sh share with you my journey and what I've learned. We're, I'm going to probably take about 25 minutes and I'm going to go just through some basics and then it'll be really helpful because I'm going to I'm going to turn my screen to the website and we're going to poke around the website because we actually have an amazing uh, website in Washington state. Um, I can just let you know that my my daughter who lives in Chicago, I was trying to teach her how to do the same thing. And I was on their state website and they don't want their citizens to engage in Illinois because you couldn't find anything. And ours has done really well. So as we go, if you have questions, pop them in the chat. Tali's going to be um, uh, moderating that and stopping me if needed. And if you really want to ask something, just call it out. We're going to have a little bit of an informal session here tonight. And so here we go. We already did this. A lot of you know your legislative district. Uh, I'm not going to ask how many of you remember um, how a bill becomes the song, how a bill becomes a bill, because uh, many of us grew up with that in schools. I don't know if they're still teaching it in schools. I think our civic education lately might not be the same. Um, so this is the framework. Honestly, it's not dissim it's it's very similar. Each state has its own. I'm trying to get rid of my oops, oops, I did the wrong thing. Each state has its own sort of um, way it runs its legislature. In Washington State, we have a part-time legislature. So our electeds are either our people of means have partners who are people of means or work. And this is a part-time job. Um, we are on a biennium system in Washington state, which means it's a two-year system. And in the odd years, uh, this is where our budget for Washington state is set. And it's uh, 105 days. And the real focus is the budget. And a lot of people like to say budgets are moral documents. So we all get very engaged to see where our money is going. And in even years, it's a short session. It's only 60 days. And so it's usually tweaking bills that were passed in the last session or trying to get a few top priority policy bills going forward. I'm giving you an example of dates from the 2023 session. We will know what the dates are for the 2024 session just before the first day, which is the second Monday of January every year. Um, so right before the second, um, the, I think the first day in session, they, they make their draft calendar and they vote it in to be the official calendar. Um, for this session, I see there's something in chat. Tali, you're going to tell me if I have to stop, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so these dates are not representative of this year. This year, it's going to be faster. And what does that mean? Every bill goes through this. You start in a chamber of origin. A chamber of origin is either the Senate or the House in our state legislature in Olympia. A bill is introduced. It's in a policy and it's given to a policy committee. And there's a cutoff date. It has to get a public hearing and then a vote before this cutoff date. And if it doesn't make the cutoff date, it's done for the session. If it's a biennium and it's the first year, it'll be live for the second year. Then it, if there's a fiscal note, what's a fiscal note? There's a fiscal impact. And anything over $50,000 in the fiscal note means it has to go to a fiscal committee. Same thing applies. It has to have a public hearing and a vote and pass by a cutoff date or it stops. And then it goes into um, the rules committee. I call that the. Bill have to be actually pulled out of the of the drawer in order to go for a floor vote. The people who decide that is um, the the leadership. So it's going to be the Speaker of the House or uh, in the Senate and the Democratic leadership. And I'll show you where you can find out who's on Democratic leadership. And they decide which bills get pulled and they also decide in what order. And in the beginning of the session, um, it takes a little bit longer. 
And towards the end of the session, it comes a lot faster. And they're very strategic. They'll pull non-controversial bills first. They'll leave controversial bills that they really want to get behind as a Democratic majority towards the end, because then they shorten the times and shorten how long the um, opposition can add just 500 amendments and suck up all of the time in the calendar to pass bills. So rules is a very interesting place. And then it goes for a floor vote and it, it passes. Then it goes to the other chamber. That's called the opposite chamber. And then it has to go through all the exact same steps. And when it comes out, it's it's got six steps in here and it's got to meet cutoff dates. And when it comes out, if the if the if uh there's a difference in the bills between the uh, chamber of origin and the opposite chamber, they go to what's called concurrence. The leadership in the both chambers will discuss and they'll determine how they want the final bill to be, and then it will go to get signed. Or after 10 days, if it's not signed, it automatically becomes law unless it's vetoed. That more or less is a flurry of activity that is going to happen in 60 days starting the second Monday in January. Um, any questions on the basic, how oh, a bill becomes a bill? You can raise your hand, you can call out or put it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. So the first thing that I learned is Obviously, I said, do you know your district? Do you know your electeds? I also poke around and we'll get to the website and see what committees do they sit on? Because it's really important to understand their influence is going to be much greater if they sit on a policy committee. There were years when I was very active with um, um, criminal justice reform, so public safety committee. I really uh, was in, in policing reform. I was really focused on who sat on, on, on the public safety committee, um, or if you're really focused on um, fund, fully funding education, it would be education committees, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important to know what committees do all your elected sit on. That's where they're going to have actually the most influence, or you can have the most influence on them. Then we're also going to, I'll show you, you're going to look and see what bills do they sponsor? What bills have they sponsored as a prime sponsor? Um, and then, of course, the the what bills do they sign on? But I think it's really important to understand what are their priorities? What are going to be their pet, pet focus areas? And if they align with your passions, that's really good. Um, and if not, it's really important that they hear from their constituents, you know, I really care about these bills. And then we also talk about there are policy or lobby groups, and there's a bunch, and we have a list at the end of this, and we're going to send, I believe we're sending this PowerPoint out, uh, or we have it on the website. I think we have a list of um, policy groups that are working in economic justice, and um, there's Invest in Washington Now, Economic Opportunity Institute, a coalition called um, balance our tax code. And there are folks that are going to be a little bit more nitty gritty, policy wonky. And it's you can get uh, their newsletters, their issue briefs uh, to be a little bit more educated on the issues. And then the last one, which is really, I think, important for everybody to kind of do on their own is understand your connection to the issue and craft your story. Um, so it's really important when you're talking to, it's not important. It's more effective and you have more influence. If you're speaking in testimony or if you're sending an email, and if you say, I really believe in um, passing um, uh, the expanded working family tax credit, um, you know, and then and then there's a story. I saw my neighbor really struggle. And after a bit, you know, I'm making this up, by the way, I saw a neighbor really struggle after a bad divorce. And I saw the impact that this had on them being able to access food or whatever it may be. But you want to be able to relate to why you really care um, and, and hopefully just a snippet of a story. And it becomes more memorable and it helps your elected to begin to craft and talk about when they're advocating for bills. I'm hearing from constituents that blah, blah, blah. Harry, we have a quick question. 
Absolutely. Uh, David is wondering if public comments are just welcome in the policy and fiscal committees only or also in the rules committee? Ah, that's an excellent question. Um, I think it's important that you let the committees know that you care about these bills and why, either pro or against, so policy committee and fiscal committee. It's important when it's in the rules committee that you understand, does one of your elected sit on the rules committee? Because then you can say, I want you to get this bill to a floor vote. Please let me know, what is this a priority of yours? If your elected does not sit in the rules committee, then you just have to go to dem leadership. Did that answer the question, David? I, I guess I was kind of wondering, like, when do they do public testimony in Olympia? Is that at all of these boxes on your slide or just no, in the policy just, and fiscal committee? Just policy and fiscal. Thanks. That was a great question, by the way. Anyone else have a question? So next slide, uh, it's not, ah, there we go. So what are your moments of influence? If you think about what we just saw um, in committees, the first thing that happens is it needs to be scheduled for a public hearing. They're not gonna schedule bills for a public hearing if they think the bill is going nowhere or there's a ton of opposition to it. Sometimes they'll schedule a public hearing, like last year they did have a public hearing for the wealth tax. They also had a public hearing for um, guaranteed, basic, uh, guaranteed basic income. Um, and the public hearings is you can do an easy sign in, I'm for this bill or I'm against this bill, which is easy. It's a click, click. You can also submit written testimony. You can also sign up to give verbal testimony. And oftentimes there are panels that give verbal testimony. But as a constituent, as a citizen, as a resident of Washington State, you can sign up to give public testimony. And if there's time, you, you absolutely can tell the committee what you're thinking. Once there's been a public hearing in either the policy or fiscal, it's going to it has to get scheduled for an executive session, which means they're going to discuss, there might be some amendments, and then they're going to vote. And right before an executive session, you might get an ask if you're on the action mails, which I hope everyone is going to want to be on our action mails, is to say, email the whole committee and tell them you really want to see this pass and your reasons why, that two, three or four sentences of crafting your story. And usually, um, and then if your elected is on the e is on the committee, then you absolutely want to make contact with them directly, either email or call. Um, now, emailing the committee, and, and and again, we craft the action mails. If it's a very partisan issue, um, we'll just email all the Dems on the committee. And if it's uh, there's some nonpartisan support, we'll email everybody on the committee. We had heard in the world of economic justice that expanding uh, the tax credit um, generally is more nonpartisan than some of the other um, bills that are out there. So we'll take that into consideration. Um, and if you have a compelling personal story, oops, I have to... If you have a personal story, um, uh, compelling personal uh, testimony, then it's good to email them all. Um, so that's those are your your moments of influence. All in all the different so in all these different stages before all these different cutoffs, the policy committee and the fiscal committee. That's where we're going to sign in pro or con, and we're going to send an email to the committee, and we're going to testify or submit written testimony. Before a floor vote, you're going to try and get that bill, bill out of um, um, rules, and then you're going to uh, hope, uh, you're going to let your elected know you expect them to vote for or against, depending on what the bill is. 
I think the rule of thumb is there's about 2,000 bills introduced in a biennium and about 500 get through some, no, I think it's 600 get through some part of the process. So that's sort of the um, uh, range of bills we're talking about. But it's, it's worth noting that a lot of bills are introduced not expecting to pass, but just to set the tone for an issue or to start you know, start the fight for getting it passed in years down the road. Absolutely. Tali, I know you worked on, uh, on funding, fully funding uh, education. How long, how many years were you guys at that with our state legislature? Well, I was only at it for a couple of years, but I was on the tail end of people working on it 20 years ago, and we're still not quite there. I think the fastest I've seen things happen is the summer of George Floyd, the next legislative session, actually bills were introduced and passed in the same session, which was sort of like hair raising. Of course, some of them went through pushback and pullback the next session. Um, but yeah, the, the, the more visionary bills will take anywhere from three to 10 years of, of nonstop your voice, advocacy and advocacy orgs working on it in order to get passed. Um, so this is kind of the basics. Before I move on, are there any questions? Is everyone still with me? Yeah, okay. So, there, we're going to do. Two, we're going to we're going to send out action mails from SVP for people who sign up for them, people who want to go deeper or who might be interested in other issues. This is an example of sort of the information you get when you sign up with a policy org or a lobby org. So this is the Economic Opportunity Institute, and they really got behind fair taxes that provide ample funding, economic justice, a lot of the same bills we're talking about. And you can see at the very start of last year's session, these were the three bills that they were prioritizing. And then throughout the session, they sent out a lot of information about these and when to act. And this is just an example of what it looks like. This is an example of the inaction alert that we will send. We will have people indicate if they want to be on our action alerts. And um, this is an example of what an action alert, they'll only come more or less once a week. We are talking, there's a 60 day session, things happen fast and furiously. And you'll see that there's a bill number, a name of a bill number, and an action that you're asked to do. And signing in, as I mentioned, signing in pro or con is just a click, click. You go to a website and you say, I am for this bill or I am against this bill. It used to be pre-COVID that you had to actually be in Olympia to register whether you're pro or con. And so really a lot of bills that generated a ton of noise might get maybe 50 to 70 people actually going to Olympia, sitting in the room and signing in at the back of the room. Now that everything's online, if there's a bill that a lot of people are focused on and looking at, there will be over 2,000, 3,000 people who sign up pro and con. So COVID, funny, really democratized how Washington State Legislature works, and they're continuing to do it this way post-COVID because of that. Um, and then you'll notice one of the actions was also to contact your elected and every single one of our Washington state electeds, it's really nice. It's first name dot last name at ledge.wa.gov. It's pretty easy to, to get their emails. Um, and then 
you'll will always almost always have a link to either talking points from a lobby org or a full few bullets that we will compose for you. And um, typically, when you contact your elected, it's um, you know uh, SB. By the way, SB means Senate bill. HB means House bill. Anything in the one thousands two thousands is a House bill. Anything in the 4,000s, 5,000s is a Senate bill. Um, so, you know, uh, it might be, uh, dear, dear Senator, um, uh, SB 5486, wealth tax is coming up for a vote. I want to let you know as your constituent, I care very deeply about this issue. The reason why I care is three cent, you know, two sentences, my little story or my little hook into it. Um, thank you very much. I will be, you know, watching for your vote or thank you for everything you do. It depends on if you're trying to push them off a fence or they're clearly already off the fence. Then we'll do public bonus actions. Bonus actions are a little bit more effort. And so I'll show you on the website, every single hearing is recorded and posted to our website. And so you don't, unless you wanna really testify, you don't even have to hop on when they're having session. You can go to the link on the website and you can listen to the hearing. And then I think it's really important because you begin to understand what is the opposition saying? And not only that, who is the opposition? Um, and then, if there are things that lobby groups are doing or other groups are doing, we'll also advertise those. So this is pretty a pretty typical action mail for a Friday when it's in session. And it just comes fast and furious. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Tali. I was just gonna say, it's worth noting that um, even if you know that, uh, a representative or senator supports a bill, it's worth sending them an email because uh, they need that encouragement and positive reinforcement as well. I will also say a lot of you have met with your electeds. I'm sure you're 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 well versed in this. I love working on state laws because it doesn't take an army to influence them. They count constituent um, input. Um, so wealth tax, if you don't do copy and paste, if, if, if you walk away with anything from me, don't ever do sign a petition or copy and paste because unless you change the opening paragraph and paraphrase stuff, it doesn't count as a unique contact. So I could get 2,000 people copy and paste the exact same words. It's going to count as one vote for a bill for a lawmaker. So let's say uh, Senator Frame, her staff counts and will tell her it's, you know, the wealth tax is coming up for a vote. And we had 25 people contact us telling us they really want to see it passed and five people against by the way, 25, 30 people contacting a state legis a state lawmaker is a lot. It, and it feels really good compared to, you know, what goes on in D.C. where it's like, can I ever have impact there? I don't know. That's where maybe petitions and money uh, will, will count a lot more. But within the state, they actually will count. Their staff counts and... Um, and, and lets them know before votes, before uh, they pull it from rules. So it's important. David. So you're saying, like, like I get a lot of the action alerts from all the advocacy groups. And so I'm king of the, you know, click on the web form, put in my information, you know, sign the petition, send the letter to your electives. And I don't bother to take time to customize it. And you're saying... I, I was under the impression they're still going to say, you know, Washington Budget Policy Center sent out actual alert and we had 500 people respond on it, pro or, or against. Won't, won't they quantitize that rather than say, oh, we had one vote? The elected, the lawmakers I have spoken to and the staffers I have spoken to have all unanimously said far more impactful if it's customized. 
And a lot of times on surveys and petitions, they're just building their lists versus having real impact. And I will use templates and forms if they allow me to customize the words. There's a lot of them where they have a, a, an opening paragraph that's the exact same, but then they give you a window where you can customize. I always customize. And you know what I do? I usually delete 90% of it. And I just say, I really care about this issue because done, hit send. So I'm not saying it doesn't have impact, David, but it's just far less according to everyone I've talked to. Okay, let's go have fun. Um, let's see a let's see a show of hands. How many people have gone to Washington State website before? Oh, a lot of you. Well, I'll have to see what special things I can show you then that you don't know. So this is the Washington State um, website I love. Um, obviously, find your district is, is right on the left. You all know. If you look at, let's look at the Senate. And I'm going to look at my senator. And let's see, I'm going to try and show some tricks that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. And I'm going to look up Senator Frame when the website wakes up. And let's go Frame. Okay, so if I click down here on, first of all, you can see all the committees on the right-hand side. If you click on details right here, you will see when the session starts, the bills they're sponsoring is listed right here. So I oftentimes go to this to see what they're sponsoring. And once, oops, once the session starts, bills are pre-populated and, and there will be a nice list here and it'll show you what bills they're sponsoring. It's not in session now, so it doesn't work. And I was gonna show you something really slick. I didn't realize it wasn't going to show you from last session. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, if you go to, I'm going to go back. I'm going to just go back, I'm trying to think. Um, when the first day they vote on the calendar, the calendar and cutoffs is going to be under agenda schedules and calendars. Uh, the Legislative Information Center is actually not bad. There's a lot of materials here, how to contact your legislators, classes and tutorials, documents, public policy. There's actually, we've, we've really got a great website. If you look at the highlights over on the right, you can understand the legislative process, navigate the website. A bill tracking tutorial. So it's actually a fabulous website. Now I was going to go to a bill page. Can everyone see that we are now on bill 1297? Okay. This you'll notice is from the 2021 22 legislative calendar because I pulled I pulled the drop down and I got the the biennium years that I'm looking for. I wanted to show you a bill that went all the way through the process so I could show you some things here. First of all, the first name is your prime sponsor always. So if you want to know who's the prime sponsor, it's the first name. Secondly, the legislative assistant of a prime sponsor, typically they'll talk to anybody. You don't have to be their constituent and you can call representative and all you have to do is click on Ty and you'll get her information. You call Ty's office, the legislative sponsor will answer and you'll say, you know what? I really care about your bill. I'm working with SVP on it. And I had a question. It hasn't come up for a vote. And I'm wondering, is this still a priority? And the legislative assistant usually will share as much as they can, because if they're a prime sponsor, they want a lot of people involved in getting the bill across. 
So that's trick one. Am I giving you guys some new stuff? Show of hands. I got a half nod from David. Okay. I don't want to bore you. Tali, tell me if people look bored or if they're going to sleep here. I'm trying to think of new stuff. So finding the prime sponsor. And then you've got all, these are all co-sponsors. If you don't see somebody, it doesn't mean they don't support the bill. There's a, there's a cutoff window to, to adding your name to be a co-sponsor, by the way. So if I see that one of my lawmakers is not a co-sponsor on a bill that I care very much about, I will email them and say, I did not see your name on this bill. I care very much about it. Um, are you supportive of this bill? And, and, and their aides will get back to you and answer your email and say yes or no. Companion bills. Down here is a companion bill. If I click on it, it's the exact same bill, but you notice it didn't hardly do anything. There's nothing down below. Typically, they will introduce a bill in the House and the Senate. They're companion bills. They're more or less the same bill. And then there's some strategy about which bill are they going to try and move all the way through. And so one bill might move faster than, and then the other bill, they stop putting effort in. Sometimes one bill starts going through and it gets bastardized with a just a ton of amendments and they'll start pushing the other bill through. So that's what a companion bill is. They're more or less the same, but that's that chamber of origin to opposite chamber and the reverse. Then you can see Everything that happens in session, this is where we look at the end of Wednesday night, they will publish the schedule of public hearings and executive sessions for the following uh, uh, work day, uh, work week. So if by the end of Wednesday night, there isn't a public um, public hearing schedule for a bill that we're um, focused on, we might send out in the action alert, I'll let your, if you're elected is on the committee or let send an email to the chair of the committee or send an email to all the Dems on the committee. You want this to get a public hearing and it hasn't been scheduled yet. So this is where you can find out at the end of Wednesday night, what's gonna be in the next week. You can also look and see that there was a public hearing and there are all sorts of materials. I don't usually look at the committee materials. I'll show you what I do look at. And then you can see here was a vote and you can see who voted for it, do pass, who voted against it, and minority without recommendation. I'm not, you know, honestly, I don't know the difference between the minority do not pass a minority without recommendation. They're all kind of against it in different ways. And then you can see it got referred to appropriations on February 8th because it had to go to a fiscal committee. And you can see that there was a substitute bill that was passed. This is where it's really important to follow policy orgs because they know whether the substitutes and the amendments are good or bad. They can stick in what's called strikers, which is a complete replacement of a bill. They can really change the entire intention of a bill. So sometimes just looking at the website is not enough to know if you're still for or against a bill. And then you can see it went all the way down and you can click and see who voted for and against just by clicking here on the reports and it'll tell you who voted for. Oftentimes, a lot of the bills we look at anyway are um, partisan and you can see it. And then you can see the floor vote and you can see that the president of the uh, house signed it and that it was delivered to the governor and the governor signed it. So what do I look at down below? So first of all, uh, you can look at the bills. I find them very hard to read. They're not always written in English. Um, I find that the uh, sometimes the bill analysis is a little bit easier to read. But the fiscal note, if you look at the fiscal note, if there is a fiscal note, it means it has to go to a fiscal committee. If there is no fiscal note, it means it doesn't have to go to a fiscal committee. And I'll click on it just so you can see the working families tax exemption obviously had a big fiscal impact. And so this is how you can see staffers do this. Can you see the fiscal note on the screen? Okay. Yes. 
Um, so staffers prepare the fiscal notes. So I do look at fiscal notes or I look to see the presence of a fiscal note to see whether something's going to have to go to a fiscal committee or not. And then the gold mine is really down here, available videos. It's amazing. Every single public hearing has a video of it. And you can just listen to it. You can fast forward. You can usually the beginning is where the sponsor presents the bill and the key talking points and the key context for the bill. And I find it a very good thing to always listen to. Um, and then, you know, obviously anything to do with economic justice, there's going to be Tim Imond uh, against, and I just fast forward his stuff. Um, and he's going to be on every single one. It's really kind of, I got to give him credit. He is incredibly uh, consistent. Now let's look at one of the bills that we are interested in. This is, oh, what did I do? I thought I had another bill up. Okay, so let's look at another bill. I was going to show you another bill. Let's look at uh, the wealth tax uh, SB 5486. So under bill information, you don't do the SB or the HB. 5486. And this is the latest session. So I'm going to hit. Okay. So this is a uh, frame. Senator Frame is the prime sponsor. You can see everybody who signed on. You can see if your elected has signed on, it would be your senator. You can see that there's a companion bill. Because but it's you're saying that they've already, even though the session hasn't started, they've already started to put it's submit a second bills. Year, second year of the biennium. So this was introduced last year. You'll notice here oh. um, on this drop down, there are always two years. So what was re what was introduced last year is still live until the end of this session. It's a by it's always a biennium. So this is all information from last session, but it's still here because we have one more session to go in our biennium. Good question. Um, what you can see is, this is the process. Introduced in committee, if it is out of committee, and it's gone to rules, it'll be on the floor calendar, it'll be then passed. If it gets a little dot an on floor calendar, it means it's out of rules, and then it's passed the chamber, and then it has to go to the opposite house. And then after passage, you see the uh, governor's action. You can see with the uh, wealth tax that there is a fiscal note, so it's gonna have to go to a, the fiscal committee. You can also see that it had a public hearing last year in the Senate Ways and Means. You can listen to it. Skip over to Naiman. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing good there because uh, I listened to it. Mm -hmm. um, I was also going to show you if you click send a comment on this bill to your legislators. It's awesome. You click on this bill, you enter your information, it'll automatically bring up your two reps, your senator, and then you decide who you want to send it to, and it'll send it to them. It does nothing if your elected isn't on this committee. So mm -hmm. usually, if your elected is on the committee, it's super easy to just use this button. That's why you saw in that sample action alert, it was first name dot last name at ledge.y.gov, because if you just click on this button, if they're not on the committee, it's not going to help it get out of committee. Uh, and we can go, so you can see that the Senate bill got a uh, public hearing. It never got an executive session, which means it was never voted out of the policy committee. And, you know, Senator Frame knew it wasn't going to. This was an introduction. This was that education, let people know about it, talk with the uh, caucus, see what kind of opposition there is, see how many people are rallying behind it. Um, so this is not unexpected for this bill. And if we look at the companion bill, you can see that uh, Rep. Tai was the prime sponsor for the companion bill. And you can also see that it got a public hearing and it didn't do anything. Um, 
I think that was more or less what I was going to show you about the website. So I will open it up and go back home and see, does anybody have questions about, uh, there's a ton of other stuff on the website. So maybe I should say, you can also go to the Let Your Voice Be Heard. And this is where you can uh, communicate um, communicate in different ways. It's very easy. Uh, you can find your district and legislators. You can get to bills. You can get to ATV. Um, there was one other thing I was going to show you, and I can't remember. So are there any questions about navigating the website? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. It's worth just chiming in to say um, that was a ton of information, which uh, if it felt a little overwhelming, just know that that's what the advocacy organizations are doing constantly. They're calling this information and then they're sending you an update and synthesizing it for you. So um that's important. The other thing I would mention is for those of you that um, seem pretty savvy with all this, if, well, first of all, I should ask, has it, has anyone here uh, testified at a hearing? Two, three. Um, if you're curious about it, but it, so if several people have and several people haven't, uh, as somebody who has, but was, uh, is a complete introvert and was terrified to do it prior to, I would just say it's worth watching a hearing to see what it looks like to testify. And you'll see it's really not a big deal. You, you draft a statement, you get your two minutes. Um, and now you can do it online. <laughs> you used to have to go to Olympia to testify. So um, just, just know that if, you know, you're showing up here because you obviously care enough to advocate and uh, you might be interested in uh, testifying and it's very doable and it makes a big difference. Awesome, what a great segue, Tali. I love that. Carrie, yeah. um, I, I just wanted to also add, um, really um, piggybacking onto what um, Tali just said about testifying. A lot of the organizations that we work with, with SVP or that we have funded um, both currently and in the past, actually have policy um, and advocacy teams. And they let us, we can ask them to let uh, SVP know when they need us um, to potentially testify. So don't hesitate to call Terry or Tally or myself or Melissa. Um, or Emiko um, or Sherry Richardson and find out, does Front and Center need anyone to testify? Does uh, Children's Alliance need anyone? Um, does um, uh, United Indians? So we have a lot of different opportunities on different topics that our voices can be very helpful. So I just wanted to let us know, you don't have to do all the work we just want, you know, we just want you to be available when the work is needed. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Oops. Nope. I want to go back. How, uh, my, sorry. Oh, yeah. I want to go previous. I have a question for people. Oh, as you're doing wait, that. wait, I wanted to follow up on uh -huh. these comments. So both Tali and Ruby. We are going to be composing Friday action mails. And as part of the Friday action mail, um, we'll be um, engaged with policy orgs and synthesizing their information. We're going to be sending you here are the actions. And we usually do them on Friday so you can take action before uh, the session, uh, before they commence again on Monday morning. Hopefully, we're going to have our train tracks rolling so that we will publish for you uh, front and center is looking for uh, people to testify. 
um, contact this person. So, so we hope to be able to synthesize. This is going to be our, our we did a little trial run pilot last year, but this is going to be our first year. Um, so the goal is to be able to make it easy for you to engage um, both to synth to have information synthesized for you and to highlight opportunities like we did here about the rally for capital gains. So I'm sure everybody is so eager now. So we are going to track the bills. We're going to show up as SVP to support Children's Alliance Lobby Day. What is a lobby day? How many people... Um, how many people have been to lob, uh, Lobby Day? Raise your hand so I can see hands. Okay. A fair number of people have been to Lobby Day. If you have not been to Lobby Day, what it means is you go to Olympia. It's organized for you. There will be organized meetings with lawmakers by district um, and with talking points. So if we go, for example, with Children's Alliance and they're def they're definitely getting behind the wealth tax and uh, let's say they, they're they they're gonna um, orchestrate a lobby day and we're gonna join them as SVP for lobby day, we, we represented a bunch of different districts and with our districts, we would be meeting and we would be giving talking points from Children's Alliance of why we are meeting with our lawmakers and why we care so much about this bill. Sashim. Oh, sorry. I still have my hand up from lobby day question. Sorry. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay. So I previous, um, we're going to send out uh Friday updates and da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, mark your calendar. We're going to have a virtual kickoff. Uh, the first Thursday, which is January 4th from 5 to 6.30, mark your calendar. It's going to be online because session starts the following Monday. Uh, we will have a draft calendar of cutoff dates. And it's really important. Once those cutoff dates are published, it just starts happening. You get like two weeks in the committee to get something out of committee, two weeks to get it out of the fiscal committee, two weeks, you know, and then like three weeks, four weeks on the floor. I mean, it's just really fast. I will mention one thing. I wanted to keep this simple. There's just all sorts of nits and nuances to this. I have to find out more specifically bills that are necessary to implement budget or NITB, necessary to implement the budget, NITB, and they don't have to conform to the cutoff dates. So I don't know, are they going to consider the wealth tax NTIB. And if it's NTIB, the cutoff dates might not be as salient, but we will act as if there are cutoff dates and we really want to push hard and heavy and raise our voices in the and with the cutoff dates. And then we have to speak with leadership. And, um, you know, I, I think Senator Frame will be able to tell us out of the bills we're looking at uh, which one are strict cutoffs and which are not. So that's one of the nits. There's a lot of, there's, there, there's, I mean, this is not as, there's as much art as there is to science to how bills become bills. Um, so what are we going to do at our virtual kickoff? Um, we're going to learn, we're going to uh, have a kickoff. On, these are the bills. These are the bill numbers. This is what the bill is proposing. We're probably going to have some fact sheets by then from some of the policy orgs. And um, uh, Stephen Blanford is going to also be speaking as well as Nick Federici. And Nick is just a fabulous professional lobbyist who really knows the ins and outs of these bills and lives in Olympia when... Um, Olympia is in session and knows the ins and outs of um, some of the strategies. They're going to hold off on this until the end and there's more time pressure and less shenanigans or we're going to move on this fast because we see a little bit of um, 
bipartisanship or this one, don't hold your breath. It's not going anywhere this year. So we will be getting that in January 4th. And I'm really looking forward to the two um, speakers we have lined up. And with this, more than anything, know who your electeds are. Get on all their newsletters. Go to their town halls. Um, and you can request a meeting. And if you don't have time to meet with them, I always think during this downtime in November, December, um, downtime for them before they get into gear. Once they're in session, they have no, they don't have time to breathe, really. Um, if you can meet with them, it's great to meet with them and ask them, what are you, what's your prime focus areas? Are you engaged on economic justice? What, what are your pet, you know, pet bills that you're going to be bringing? Where are you trying to work on bipartisan legislation? What do you think some of the opposition is going to be in and how can I help you to get your bills across? And then, of course, we've mentioned the policy groups and then join us VP when we go down for lobby day with Children's Alliance. You don't have to be an expert. It's really interesting in this country. These guys actually work for us. And like I said before, when you get 20, 25 constituents calling about an issue or a bill, it really floats up. They, I've gotten, I've gotten return emails or even in newsletters that said, I have heard from many of you that you care about, you know, fill in the blank. Um, I always advocate for short correspondence is better. You don't need to educate lawmakers on contents of bills. It's like, I really care about the wealth tax, which is going to impose a 1% tax after the first quarter billion dollars, and it's going to affect 750 people. I really believe in this. And if I was one of them, I'd say tax me. I'm not one of them, so I can't add that. Um, and so you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to write a whole long. And David, going back to your question about the templates, a lot of times in the templates, you'll find that they go through all this policy wonk stuff. And the I delete it all. They, these people don't need that stuff. They're not going to read the, the policy nuances. They're going to get that from the prime bill sponsor. They're going to get that from the bill digest of the staff that reads it to them. Um, and so, and always, always be respectful and um, always adapt your experiences and words. And then we have some resources. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And wow, I got through it all. Not as many questions. You guys are just all ready to go with us in um, in starting the second Monday in January to get these uh, these bills raised some hell. Who's in? <laughs> with that i open up the floor it doesn't have to be q a it can be comments it can be insights it can be your own experience or you can say i'm hungry i want to go home anybody there's a question about how do we get on the email list if Anybody of the attendees here want to be on the email list, put it in chat and uh, we will capture that right now. We have it on our website, uh, on, on the advocacy page, and also we will make sure to include it in the follow-up email. Um, is there anybody on the call who would love to partner on being involved and being on a call once a week with uh, our advocacy partners and helping craft the Friday action mails, because I would love a partner. You can reach out to me individually. And there was Ruby in the chat. So Tali, are you capturing people in chat who want to be on the action mail? Because I'm sure everybody here said, put me on that action mail. Yes, I am catching. I would uh, just ask people, um, uh, you're, you're here because you are passionate about some issues. So um, can you just share what that is, either uh, by coming off mute or in the chat? Uh, I can share. I mean, I'm, you know, income inequality is very high on the list and climate. I mean, those are the 
big two for me. And, I, you know, to the extent we can try to save democracy, that's nice. But I think Washington, we're relatively <laughs> safe compared to some places in the country. So I'm less worried about that. But the other two are, are my main focus. Great. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? This is, this is Melissa, and um, it has been a lifelong mission of mine, which is uh, 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 access to abortion care and mm -hmm. um, uh, reproductive health care for all, um, and revenue reform, because they actually come together, uh, those uh, two items. So um, I have uh, always been very passionate about both of that. So. Uh, this is Carrie. I uh, currently get to work on bringing ranked choice voting to Washington state. So I work in the democracy reform space and um, really love it because I hope that it supports all the issues we care about here tonight. Carrie, this is Melissa. I'm going to be uh, hosting a house party in February supporting uh, uh, ranked choice voting. I moved from Colorado where we were big proponents there. And um, so uh, carrying that passion as well. So, oh my goodness. Well, we'll have to connect. Thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. For absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for all you're doing. That's great. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. I, I've worked in health justice for many years as well, um, and also immigrant justice, and um, been involved also in thinking about public goods campaigns and, um, you know, the revenue fights that really unite public goods campaigns. Great, thank you for sharing. Antia, did I pronounce your name correctly? Perfectly. Oh, Antia, thank Hi. you. Uh, I can send you a link to a couple of the prior recordings. I'd love and, that. And uh, you don't have to feel like you're, you're confident and polished and um, we'd love to add you to the action mails and you can, even without knowing anything, you can always be for or against a bill. And sometimes we're against bills when there are poison amendments that got in them. Thank you. This has been really helpful. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, any closing words, Tali? <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Um, advocacy can be a little intimidating for people. So we appreciate you coming on board and learning more. And we wanna be doing generally more engagement and advocacy with SVP because um, people who wanna show up and make a difference in the community should be involved with you know civic action and, and um, addressing income inequality. So uh, stay tuned. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either Terry or I. We're happy to grab coffee and have more in-depth conversations. And well, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa. I won't volunteer, Emiko. Um, and uh, thanks for all the encouraging comments. We really appreciate it. This has been like a year's a year in the making. And I think it's really just the beginning for us. We're just setting the foundation with you folks. So thanks for, for helping us do that. And please join Sally, us. Sally, uh, this yeah. is Karen Kalish. Um, I just want to say to you and Terry, I've been in a car on no picture, no talk um, driving, but you guys did a great job. This was like going through fifth grade again, learning. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> Reliving fifth grade, that'll be our slogan. Well, that's why you I guys that just <laughs> you just need to rehearse the song how a bill becomes a law or whatever it was. Oh my god, I was just thinking about that. Who here can sing that? How a bill becomes a bill. It it's was no, I'm there. just a bill, just a lonely bill on Capitol Hill, something like that. Uh, I should play it at our next meeting. Please join us on January fourth, and um. Join us on a lobby day and and get involved. Thanks for joining us tonight.